Hello, I'm Private George Storey and I'm a stretcher bearer in the 8th Battalion, the Norfolk Regiment. I wasn't always in the 8th Battalion. When this war broke out, I joined up and I joined the 1st Battalion that were going out to France. There was a whole group of us lads. I'm a North Walsham man, there were boys from Cromer, there were boys from Stalham, lots of the places around here. We joined up to join a regular battalion. We wanted to do our bit and by Christmas time, we ended up on the front line. Now, it was a strange Christmas that we were out there in 1914. We were all fairly fresh. And I remember at Christmas Day, we heard singing coming over from the German line right early in the morning. Blow me if the Germans didn't stand up and walk across no man's land. Well, I was pretty green. I'd never seen anything like that. I hadn't expected anything like it. But they walked across with a white flag. We wondered whatever they were doing. So we came out, and we walked across the mud, we met them in the middle of nowhere, and they wished us a Merry Christmas. We shared chocolate and backy. Some, I think that was William Hoy came out. He had his penny whistle, played a tune. And then one character kicked a football over. We had a football match with the Jerrys. The officers weren't too keen about it, not the high ups anyway. So they didn't allow us to stay in that line for much longer. That was a bit of cold winter. We lost a few of the lads, I'll have to say. Not just through action, but like me, you see, I got rheumatism uh, through the cold exposure in my legs. So I got removed back home and I was patched up in an auxiliary war hospital. I was lucky, I was actually brought back to Norfolk. I was over at Ingham, so I weren't too far from home. But other lads, they ended up in Manchester, one in London, another one, he went down to Kent. But then they patched me up and I got sent back and they just brought up the new service battalions, the 8th Battalion. And that was late 1915. 1916, there we were on the first day of the Somme. Now that was going to be the big push. Down in those trenches, you know, we we didn't know what to make of it. You know, it, it, was, it was wet, it was horrible. And from when I'd been out there in 1914, we'd seen there, I mean, there were hedgerows, there were woods. When I went back, there was, there was nothing. They were blown to matchwood. And all of those fields, they looked like the surface of the moon, filled with craters and liquid mud. And trenches, they were deep, wet and horrible. So I volunteered to be a stretcher bearer. Now that's your mate on a stretcher, and he's often in a lot of pain. And the tragedy is you can get there and there's a lot of men in front of it. You'll, you'll you get the clearance station, you'll see the surgeon, you'll see men covered up with blood, absolutely spattered up with it. They look more like a butcher than a doctor or surgeon. And then they've got to put your man down and they'll come to him in rotation. Or sometimes when you get there, your mate has gone very, very quiet. And they'll look at him and they'll just say, take him round the back. After you've got him from the battlefield and through all of that, he's gone before he gets the care he needs. And I don't think I'll ever forget that. Have you got anything interesting in your pockets? Well, I might just have something here. This is called a Princess Mary gift tin. And here you can see down here, look, there's the date. And what does that say? Christmas 1914. That's right. There's Princess Mary. Make sure we got all our tins with the M mon monogram either side for her. And up here, we've got a machine gun. And there's a bayonet there. And down here we've got battleships and around here these are all the allies all the allied nations named around the edge and inside in most of them we've got a little Christmas card you can have a look at that if you like what's it saying there with best wishes for a happy Christmas and a victorious new year that means we're going to win doesn't it yeah. we get a nice pr picture of Princess Mary look and inside here we've got a packet there of tobacco and we've got a packet of cigarettes and some of the boys that didn't smoke you'd swap that for a bit of chocolate and we did all right that Christmas. What do you carry with you when you go into action? And that is my gas mask in here. Can you see that? There it is. They've got rattles and they've got uh, gun shells that they jangle about. They say, gas, 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 quick boys. And you hear the rattles going off. And you, if you're wearing your tin helmet, knock your helmet off. You put this on, put your helmet back on and tuck this in your, in your throat. 
and that should protect you from the poison gas. But I tell you, that is a bit of a job. If you're not too quick, oh, that will get you. I've seen some terrible things happen that get right down your throat and burn your eyes. And Some men don't make it. That's absolutely dreadful. But this is what a stretcher bearer carries. That's a special water bottle with a cup on the top. And I can take that cup off and put the water in it and I can give my man on stretcher a drink, you see. Now this, that's a, what they call a dressings bag. That's a type of bandage but it's got a great big pad on it. Now, inside here, you'll see them all inside, look. There they are, look. Shell dressings. Get the idea with that? This is my, my, my kit, the things that carry my effects, all right? So what am I gonna eat? Any ideas? Mm. Yeah, they are, that's the classic thing for us, us boys. Corned beef, we call it bully beef. And you can sometimes get what they call a McConaughey ration, which is a, a vegetable stew, and you get tickler's jam, which is plum and apple. This is what we call our roll. Now oh, I'm quite lucky here, because this one's been, nicely filled. At the top I've got my button stick. We don't polish buttons in the trenches but when you're on parade you try and get them all nice and polished. Then what else have I got? Can you see I've got a knife, fork and spoon there? Yep. You see that? Well, that's for me to eat my food isn't it? Now I'm going to tell you a true story now. And that is true. You might not believe it but that's true. Now you're not allowed to take your boots off in the trenches. Now we were up there I should think that was a good 15 days. That's longer than we should have been and that was bitterly cold in that bit of the line. There was one fella, he had been suffering with his feet, suffering awful. But then he said, they're numb, they're numb. So we had to take his putties off for him and take his boots off. And one of the fellas took his sock off and he shook it. And as he shook it, on the barrack floor, we heard this noise that went <coughs> I thought there was two little black stones. We thought, blimey, well, you've been walking on stones, boy. But he looked at his foot that had gone black and they were two of his toes. And he'd got trench foot and he got evacuated from the line taken home for that. What's in here? Well, this is a ration bag. This is what we carry our food in if we go into action. We tie that onto our kit. But we also use it if we go and take the effects off the body of a dead soldier. This is his Bible and they would often carry that in the top pocket up there. They believe that that can stop a bullet. This is his pocket watch, and you can see that stopped just after, uh, around about two o'clock in the morning. That's lost its shattered shell, lost its protective cover. It's very sad, isn't it? Then we've got here, these are his dog tags. The green one stays with the body, and the red one, that's got to go to the war office, so we stop his pay. What do you think that is? A wedding ring? It is. But I think the saddest things of all are the personal effects. You see, he might have a letter that was sent to him. Here is his wife. A pretty lady. But the saddest thing I always think is when you see pictures of two little children like that and you know that they'll never see their daddy alive again. 